Happy New Year, sisters, and welcome to Go Solo Live. This is Jennifer Buchholz with Transform Via Travel. It's time to sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy my conversation with Felicia Jones, budgetologist, as she shares about how to budget for travel to have the life you want to lead in 2018. Welcome to Go Solo Live. Don't you mean Go Solo Live? Have you ever been asked, why on earth would you travel alone? Go Solo Live not only answers that question, but celebrates life as a midlife solo traveler. This is a safe place for women to come together to reminisce about their travels, encourage others to travel, and to dig into the real lessons learned from these journeys. Now join Jennifer Buchholz with Transform Via Travel as she and her guests share stories of the solo travelers of midlife women. Joining us today is Felicia Jones, budgetologist, traveler, awesome entrepreneur, speaker, and I could extol many virtues, but we don't have enough time for that and to do the podcast. So welcome, Felicia. Thank you so very much for having me, Jennifer. How are you today? I'm super excited to be kicking off the new year, talking about how can we budget for more travel? And part of me says, well, we're also budgeting time and money. And I think there's probably something to that. But since you're the money person, we're going to (laughs) be, we're going to spend more time talking to you about money. Yes. But before we get into the dollars and cents of everything, let's get into a little bit of travel stuff. Can you give people just a little flavor of what you do and how you travel and, and who Mrs. Jones is? Oh my gosh. So as far as the travel part of me, I just love traveling, going to different places. So for 2017, I did my first trip to Bhutan and Thailand, hiked up and down monasteries. It was, it was phenomenal. And um, since this is the beginning of the year, just completed a trip to Copenhagen and Iceland, for, for New Year's Eve. So really excited about all of that. What we do, and we're going to talk about this a lot later, this is how I budget to travel. But um, my husband and I, we just kind of, whatever sounds fun, we just kind of do it. <laughs> you make it sound very easy when you say it like that, but I know it, it doesn't, it's not like money's dropping from the sky and, and you yes, and your husband, is. well, we're, yes, it is. Well, no. <laughs> not looking. your sky. You need to move. I'm in the basement. I got a couple, I got a couple <laughs> barriers, but as soon as I remove those barriers, I'm all about it. <laughs> I love it. So at, first of all, let's talk about the fact that you and your husband are aligned on mm-hmm. this whole travel plan and travel as part of life for both of you. You know what? It's so interesting. So this is how, when we get more into the budgeting piece, but when we first got married, we had to sit down for about a week because we had money and savings. And I grew up, I always say that we are in a mixed race marriage. I'm in a race to spin. He's in a race to save. And (laughs) I know. (laughs) That's beautiful. (laughs) So yes, we are a true mixed race family. And to me, we had savings. And I said, I want to go to Iceland. We have money. He says, we don't have any money. I was like, what do you mean? There's money in the savings account. And we had to, this was like a few hours of understanding savings to him. Savings was for savings. Everything else was, you know, we have, we have to earmark it. So what we decided at that point was to sit down for an entire week and talk about the priorities of our marriage, what it is that we wanted to do for the rest of our lives, or at least the lives that we can see for the future and how we were going to fund it. And with that, we decided travel was our number one thing and all of our money, everything we've done with money from that point on has been centered around making sure we have money in our travel bank account. Not saying that you neglect those other bank accounts. No. So what I do with all these other things, I call it getting your old people stuff, um, fun stuff uh, together first. Take care of all those things that, you know, make sure your retirement's there, make sure your insurance is there. All the things you got to deal with when you get old or, you know, not to offend anybody listening, but I call it the grown up stuff, the boring stuff. Get all of that in place. Then we make sure we allocate money to other bank accounts for savings and emergency. But we definitely made sure that, you know, the first uh, account that gets paid is the travel one. 
But of course, you got to do a lot of cleaning up before you get to that point. That may be true for many people. There are also Mm -hmm. people, though, who hit a point in life where they maybe don't have all those same expenses that they must have. And that's a lot of the people that are probably listening right now Mm -hmm. that they've in a way paid their dues with work. So they've worked their way up the ladder a bit. So income is certainly not what it was in our Mm twenties, hopefully. And (laughs) that they may have had kids that they put through sports and kids that they help support through their higher education and maybe even kids who've returned home and at some point now they're actually, actually empty nesters. Mm -hmm. And so there's that money in terms of discretionary spending money that had been earmarked for other budgets in the past. And they may find a little bit more cash flow available. So I think that's an interesting point of where people are at as well. You know what, that can be a really tough one. I'm in a group with Um, Some people who have reached uh, retirement age and they have extra income and they're finding it really hard to go and spend the money because we have been trained so much to save, 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 put away for retirement, put away for the kids. And one of those things you're going to have to break out of that mindset, especially if travel is something you want to do. Now, what, what worked for my husband and I literally go and open up a bank account, nickname it travel put money over there. So that way everybody can see that we are, we're actively funding this account to travel. And if you have the people like my husband who, who starts to panic a little bit when you're dipping into savings, that way you have that very special account and you can start slowly changing your mindset on, you know what we have money for, we have money for travel and it'll be just the same like retirement. Now you got to fund this thing. See, see, you can stay with the same mindset. There you go. (laughs) I love it. But that's part of the mindset. So I know in the work that you do, while I think there's a lot of this logical, you know, spreadsheet based, which I do love, don't get me wrong. But along with all of that, the logic of doing the money, there's also the mindset that goes along with it. So as you're starting to help people as they're figuring out what their priorities are, where do you start? You know, um, one of the cool things is that I actually don't use spreadsheets when I do budgeting. <gasps> Shocker. What is happening? I know. I actually use post-its, post-its and walls. <laughs> so what I want you to do, especially for everyone listening, is to go and, you know, take some post-its and put all of your expenses on the wall, put all of what you're saving, what you're spending each month, then you put them in order of priority. You'll be very surprised what kind of drops off, especially if travel is something that you are targeting. So it's a very visual way to look at all of your money, putting them in priority so that, you know what, maybe we don't need to pay $100 a month for this gym membership if we say we want to travel, we want to go to Italy, we want to go to Greece, we want to tour uh, South Africa. But the thing is to make it a real target and actually stop saying, I just want to travel. Be very specific on where you want to go and then start looking at the money and making it work. You know, make sure it is like something you're focused on. Let's get rid of all the the $100 gym memberships. You know, let's get rid of Netflix. I know, shocker. (gasps) Especially if you want to get there. You know what? You got to make sure that where you want to go is like a big priority in your life. Absolutely. And, you know, it's really all about trade-offs. And the other option that you have for a trade-off, if it's not about, you know, cutting things out, well, our other option is go figure out how to go make more money. Yes. People kind of don't like it when I say that. (laughs) There's two sides to the budget, managing the money that you have and then feeding it. If you can't figure out how to cut and you've cut as much as you can, guess what? You got to go make some money. And there, you know, we are in this day and age, you can kind of make money doing just about anything nowadays. It's so crazy. <laughs> I, evidenced by a website like Fiverr, where people can <laughs> make money by writing other people's names in the sand, drawing a heart around it and taking a picture of it. There is money there. So I'll, I'll give you one better. People who go put, pick up um, dog poop out of people's yards. There you go. There's money. There is money. (laughs) And the thing is, it's like wondering what will you do to travel? Like how important is it to you? And when you figure that out, 
um, one of the things that I do to supplement my income is I have roommates mm. and that is that's a choice that I've made for many years. And I just, I own a large home. It's much too large for just one person. I've been mm -hmm. living here alone for a while. And so rather than let that space go to waste, I have roommates who are often travel nurses or medical college students. I rent them out fully furnished rooms. And between a lower unit tenant and my roommates, not only is my mortgage and insurance covered, but it's taking care of a lot of the household expenses. I actually run my household like a business. And, mm. and so for me, that's been part of my strategy to allow me to pursue entrepreneurial endeavors and travel. You, you know, it goes back to what we said. It is about the priorities. When you decide that traveling is a priority, it's really easy to start saying no to certain things and start saying yes to others. And that's why when my husband and I sat down for that entire week to try to figure out like, what's the priority of our marriage? And it sounds really funny because people are like, seriously, that's the discussion you had, but I run the marriage. I can't say it's like a business, but it kind of is like, what's our purpose? <laughs> like, why are we going to be married to each other for the next 35 years? Because we're going to run out of things to talk about. Uh, we don't have children. So we had to really sit down and decide like, is travel something we really want to do? And then the next question is, what are we willing to give up to pursue this? And that's where things got really interesting on things we were willing to give up, you know, not having brand new cars, not um, buying tons of furniture for our house. Our house looks pretty sparse when you walk in, but it has allowed us to have the money. So when, and we are one of those dangerous couples, don't ask us to go anywhere. Seriously, don't ask because we have the money and we will go. And that's kind of how we, we got to Copenhagen. My husband's friend said, hey, we're going to Copenhagen to go taste beer. Like, really? And next thing you know, I get a text message. He bought tickets and there you go. That's awesome though. And so that's what actually was interesting as you were talking because I'm not a huge travel planner. I have mm -hmm. decided not to create a travel bucket list. That's not, that's not something that's very important to me. I'm about opportunity. <laughs> so when the opportunity presents itself, it works in my schedule, it works in the budget and you know, it's of interest, I will go. And I'm also pretty clear on it when it's not something that I'm really interested in. I don't need to just go for the sake of travel, but I do like the idea of even not necessarily making this long-term commitment to a bucket list. Cause I'm not a huge commitment person, but even coming up with that short list of in the next two years, this is what I'm planning to do. And then these are a couple places that might be on the radar just so that I have a little bit more clarity around what those opportunities might look like. You know that I, I like that you do that. Um, the last couple of years, I have not had a travel list at all. I used to have one. I, 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 there are some places that are like, you know, hands down the moment I can spend a month in Kenya, um, then I'm going but I'm not ready yet. But as of the last few years, everything has been opportunity. And that's why we created the travel account so that whenever our, our rule and for everyone that's listening, go and create your, your travel account. That's actually how we budget. And we fund this account every month. You know, whenever there's five, 10 bucks, we get a uh, cash back from, you know, the IRS for paying our taxes and things like that. All the money goes into that one and it really is, we can go anywhere in the world as long as there's money in that account. And when we blow it all, we go camping. There you go. <laughs> so that was a good, easy backup plan to that as well, which is great. Yeah, there's camping. <laughs> well, and I'll say that guilt-free travel because you have chosen to budget is an important consideration as well. Would you agree? Oh yeah. Cause I was one of those when, um, when I was younger and I was going through my money stuff and that's how I became a budgetologist. I spent all my money cause I blew every last dime of it on traveling. <laughs> and I was one of those, I did the credit card dance, like let's pay off just a little bit because I want to pay for this trip to Italy. Oh, it's okay. I paid it down 500 bucks. Next thing you know, it's like $2,000 in Italy. I did that. I was a master credit card dancer when it came to travel. I was Anytime, any place, as long as there's money on a card, let's do it. And I learned my lesson. You don't want to pay for a trip two years later. It's just not as fun. 
And it is very nice when you can travel without the, you know, I'm, I'm loading up a credit card. I'm worrying about the money, all of that. You know, when we go, whatever's in the account, everything goes. And we've been able to do some quite some interesting things. Like when we were over in, we went to Corsica with some friends. We went to our very first Michelin star restaurant. I know. Wow. That, that was quite fun, but it was also how much it was uh, $400 a person. And I told my husband, I said, I hope you enjoy this meal because um, we are camping for the next year and a half. And yeah, we did go camping for a year and a half after that. But that's the beauty of budgeting this way in that whatever's in the account, you do whatever. And, you know, and we don't do international travel all the time. I'm a national park girl. I love national parks. So when the money is low and we got enough money, you know what, let's get in a car. We go to a national park, get my little passport stamp. I'm happy. That's fantastic. So, you know, you guys negotiated that travel was a priority, but what are some of the things that you, I'm not even necessarily going to say splurge on, maybe splurge or prioritize when you're traveling and how do you two align on those choices as well? We are so opportunistic. It is crazy. (laughs) I used to be the absolute planner. Like we're going to go here. We're going to go there. And I don't know what happened. I think after I got married, I think my brain just got tired of doing all of that work. So when we go to a place that I'm not really familiar with, then I kind of need to know exactly what's going on. Like with Copenhagen, we went with friends. (laughs) They did all the work. (laughs) So much better. Go with with friends that do all the work, then you don't have to think as hard. Um, Going to Europe has always been fairly simple. We did a trip to London and we literally yelped it the entire time. I just needed to know, I made sure we were, we had hotel rooms and I was like, as long as we are in this spot by this day, but even then they let you cancel what, 24 hours in advance. So, um, and you know, people kind of speak English over there, so it was okay. Right now I'm just kind of not that stressed about the travel because I've been on um, vacations with people that are so stressed with everywhere we need to go. I think you're just missing out on, on the opportunity just to like, you know what, I'm here. I'm in Thailand. Oh my gosh, I'm walking down the street in Thailand. Let's just enjoy the moment. So we are pretty opportunistic and we are pretty much in line. Sometimes it bites us in the butt because it takes too long to make a decision. (laughs) But we kind of just go with the flow. And I mean, unless there's something I'm dying to see, I just kind of go with the flow and I like to walk and just see what's out there. I agree. So what what you don't do or what what we're not talking about today is budget travel tips. Like that's not what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Instead, this conversation is intended to start to get people thinking about if they've said that money is the barrier to travel, then how do they start overcoming that? Does that make sense? Yes. If money is the barrier, I mean, cause like you said, you know, like you said, Jennifer, there's tons and tons of websites, groups that'll teach you how to, to hack your way through travel and budget. That's not the problem. What we're talking about when, it's, when, it's, um, when we're talking about getting the money, it is figuring out the priority. Really take some time to look at your life. Because I know you, you've met tons of people that say, I want to travel, but they don't do anything to move in that direction. So I like to budget, even when I'm talking to my business owners, when I'm talking to my clients, the way I budget is let's sit down and look at what's going to move your business forward. And so for everyone listening, I want you to sit down and look at what's going to move your life forward. If you honestly think that travel is where you're going to move your life forward, have a deep discussion with yourself, have a deep discussion with your partner and make it a priority. The moment you make it an absolute priority, all the money stuff falls into place. You will create your vacation account. You know, you'll start getting rid of expenses. You won't feel bad around the holidays when you have to buy presents. And, you know, you'll be like me where you send your mom a card and she says, don't I get presents anymore? Nope. (laughs) So it really is the sitting down. I mean, it's the beginning of the year. Sit down and really think about the things that you know you want to do. And all those things that you've said you've been wanting to do. You say, I want to travel. I want to go visit this place. This year, 2018, do it. Life is so short. Life is precious. If you're not doing what's making you happy, you need to go do it right now. And 
it's okay to start small. You know, for, for anybody who's sitting here going, yeah, that makes sense for them, for other people, but it doesn't quite align for me. You know, this is an easy challenge. Felicia's already saying, just get an account set up, an account that you have completely targeted for this person, purpose. And then 10 bucks a week, because 10 bucks a week is a great place to start. And when you've done 10 bucks a week and you're like, okay, so this is my life. I've done 10 bucks a week for two or three months. Could I double it? Okay. Okay. So you try it. It doesn't have to be this absolute, you know, we make all these wonderful new year's resolutions and we have all this commitment and we did that just a few days ago. And now here we are. And have we gotten to the gym? Like we promised, have we lived up to those other commitments that we're making to ourselves? Honestly, clicking the button so that you have a regular transfer from one account to another and an account that I actually think they should not even be at the same bank. <laughs> because they, I, this is my opinion. Like if I, if they're in my online banking and I need to go grab something for some reason, like I want it to be somewhere that I have to go to specially just for the travel account, whether it's physically going there or going to that website. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like shoving it in a box and putting it somewhere specific to that purpose. And that way you can see the money going in, but you're mm -hmm. not as likely to work on getting it out until, until the time is right. I, I absolutely love that. I mean, we have so many online bank accounts now and you go to a bank that you don't normally bank at, it's so easy to go open up a bank account. So that's like one small barrier. The other thing I want to toss at you, Jennifer, is that a lot of people, you know, we get on, I'm sure you get on your show and I love to talk about this and we talk about international travel a lot. And a lot of people say, well, international is just too big and it's, it's expensive and I can't get there. Here's the thing. I absolutely love traveling inside the United States. Like I said, I'm a national park girl. My goal is to get to every national park. And there are a lot of them. I have a whole book. And there are some beautiful things. And I guarantee you for every beautiful thing that you may have seen in some other country, there's something that may look just like it here in the United States. So even if you're thinking that international travel is too expensive, I can't get there, you do, you do live in a pretty cool country. For those of you who live in the United States, and we're kind of bordering two other cool countries that have some beautiful places for us to visit that are really easy for us to get to. So you don't have to leave the country. You don't even have to leave the continent <laughs> if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if the barrier is money, if you can get on a car, if we got cheap plane tickets nowadays, just get out of your comfort zone and go do something amazing. There are some beautiful cities, beautiful places here in the United States that that really won't require much um, for you to get to and to have fun. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Have fun and go see a different culture. The United States is pretty rich in different cultures too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think, and a lot of people don't even put two and two together that the U.S. Virgin Islands, very accessible. Puerto Rico, accessible. Oh, yeah. You know, so there are, there are a lot of destinations that, especially as Americans, we have available to us. Mm -hmm. But if international travel is on your bucket list and you don't have a passport yet, that would be my first like yes. <laughs> celebration step is to say, okay, if, if travel is truly a priority and a commitment, then get your passport no later than the end of Q1. Yes, a passport does help. Um, if you want to get back in the country, if you don't want to get back in the country, that's cool. <laughs> True it's up statement. to you. You could decide what you want to do. But if you want to come back home at some point, you probably need a passport. So go ahead and do it. Just knock it out. Uh, the new rules, they're more than, they're seven years now, or did they move them up to 10? 10 years for a I passport. I thought they were 10. Okay. 10, I mean, come on. What, you pay like uh, uh, less than 100 bucks for 10 years? Yep. And while you're at it, go ahead and get TSA pre-check. You're going to love it. I would even throw in there, go get global entry, but, yeah, but I, I have, feel like we're taking it to a little bit too advanced now. <laughs> global entry is a hundred dollars. It's the best thing you'll ever do in your entire life. And like TSA pre-check is 85. So for the bonus of like 15, 20 bucks, you get both for seven years. Yeah. Just saying. I know. Just saying. You could put that in your budget. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I but you got to get the passport first. Passport first. There you go. 
look at all. We're full of fascinating knowledge today, Felicia. I know. <laughs> so one of the things that you're doing is you are, you're doing a little bit more speaking around travel and budget and things like that. So when you're sharing your message with your audience, what are some of the other key tips that you have for them? You know what? Some of the key tips that I have is it's going to sound very woo woo, but it really is to go out and enjoy life. Life is precious. Life is so fragile. We only get one time to do this. And I really would encourage people to go out there, get out of your comfort zone. You will not grow inside of your comfort zone. If traveling is one of the things that makes you grow, do it. If speaking is one of the things that will help you grow, do it. Um, we have so many beautiful people on this planet that are waiting to meet you. So if you're, if it's time to start that business, if it's time to start that travel blog, that travel podcast for all, for all intents and purposes, just go and do it. Um, I'm one of those people. I hate to live in the world of regret and you don't want to do this thing of, you know what? I should have traveled when I was 20. You know what? I should have traveled when I was 30. I should have done this when I was 50. Just go and do it now. There's always time for you to learn something new. Never too late. You know, I love that you say that. So I am not a huge adventure person. I, mm -hmm. I'm not a hiker. <laughs> I do scuba dive. That has been like the main thing that has stretched my comfort zone. Interesting. But my significant other is an avid skier. And this is of no interest to me. We don't, we live, I live in Wisconsin. So there definitely are some hills, but nothing like what you might experience in Denver or other places. Yes. <laughs> he wanted me to learn to ski. And I'm like, this is going to be a bad situation. But I put like my solo traveler head on and said, when's the last time I've actually like played and experimented and done something that I haven't done before. Mm -hmm. So why don't I approach this as if I were traveling? And I did. And he went and skied all the black diamond, whatever there were there. And I learned how to ski without poles and went down the bunny hill a few times and fell probably, but didn't break anything. <laughs> but I did have fun and I was really stubborn about it. And it's like, why was I being stubborn when this should be fun? And <laughs> it was an opportunity to at least learn and try something. If I were encouraging somebody about their travel, I would be very supportive and encouraging of them mm -hmm. to go try something like that. Y you know what? You got to do something new. And one of the things, and I, I also teach a class on feeding your budget through speaking, basically going out there, making money through speaking. And I was telling the people in my class, you got to make yourself interesting. Once a month, go out there and do something so completely different out of your comfort zone, just so that you can have something cool to talk about. Because now you can talk about um, skiing on a bunny hill. I've only been skiing once. And guess what? I did the same thing you did. And it was kind of, it was actually a lot of fun. Now, I will never do a black dime, no, way too big for me, but it was just fun doing something really different. So now I can say I've gone skiing in my life. <laughs> yeah, and I'm willing to possibly even try it again at least one more time just to see how, you know, if it was as bad as I thought it was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody secretly likes it. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible, but let's not tell anybody, okay? You can always go tubing. That looks like fun. I love tubing. That and is. snowmobiling. Oh my gosh. That is like the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. That is fun. You live on the edge. No, I live when friends come into town and say, let's go snowmobiling. <laughs> that is pretty awesome. So snowmobiling is very big here in Wisconsin. It's, but you know how you start to find these expensive hobbies. So mm -hmm. skiing can be an expensive hobby. Scuba is an expensive hobby because yeah. I don't want to dive in Lake Michigan. That's not my <laughs> ideal destination for diving. So therefore much of my travel revolves around opportunities to dive. Mm. Do you, have you gone to Belize yet? I've not gone to Belize. I was able to dive Fiji. Okay. I have a friend in Belize if you need to know someone. Ooh, good to know. Okay, we're going to save that for another. <laughs> so let's talk about some of these other tips that you share with folks. Okay. So one of the things um, we definitely talked about a lot here, definitely sit down and figure out your priorities for what you want to do for for 2018, go ahead and just have that long talk with yourself, with your partner, open up your vacation account. Seriously, go open it up. 
Get a free account. Don't get one where they're telling you, you got to do $2,500 minimum. Get a free account and start funding it. I put the priority of vacation right up there with the 401k and the IRA and any other medical stuff. Do it. The other thing, um, before, even before you do all of this, take a good look at all of your finances. If it's time to get out of debt, get a plan to get out of it. Um, it makes travel a whole lot easier when you don't have burdens on you. So this is a great time for you to really sit down, look at all of your finances, have that big long talk, figure out if travel really is the priority, make sure you have a plan to get out of debt, make sure you have a plan to get off of the credit card cycle and get all of your house, financial house in order. It makes life a whole lot easier and a lot more simpler when it, when it comes to travel. And just as a warning for those of you who are saying, well, you're making it sound easy, there were a good three years we did not travel because we were taking care of all of this stuff. Yeah, it was pretty painful because I wanted to go so many places. <laughs> right. But we took the time to, you know what, if this is going to be the future, we got to clean up what's happening right now. So please start with those tips and definitely, you know, just get started. If you have questions, um, I'll let you know later on how you can find me if you got questions about this stuff. So I want to ask, because I'm kind of that person who needs to see progress, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm on track. And I, my question would be, if, if I had debt to take care of, and I also wanted to start this travel account, mm -hmm. is it either or, or is it simultaneous? You can do both at the same time. I think so now, too. Now, there, there are some people out there who say if you have savings and you have debt, then you have no savings. But you know what? Sometimes we need some things that make us happy. <laughs> now, I would say do both. Now, what's going to happen is that if you're paying off debt right now, you're not going to be able to fund your travel account as much as you want. You might be funding it like, you know, five, 10, 20 bucks, maybe a hundred while everything else is going toward the debt. I mean, if you're dead serious like we were, then yeah, you go tackle the debt first. But if you just need some, some little like happy dances, like, yay, we got a couple of hundred bucks in our travel account, go ahead and start it. Also know that when the debt is gone, when you've gotten your financial house in order, there is more money to play with. And when you have more money to play with, travel gets even more funner. I don't know if funner is a word, but it it's is funner. Today. <laughs> it's a lot funner. Yes. <laughs> I agree. And so I appreciate it. For me, I'd like to see a little bit of that progress to like feel that there is an impact of small savings because yeah. it does make a difference. So keep in mind that there is no perfect way to do this, but that idea of looking at your whole picture and mm -hmm. you need to have your whole financial life. And if it's just you, that's easy. If it's you plus one or you plus kids or whatever that is, travel needs to be part of the goal that you have for the whole part of your life. I'm keep drawing circles in the air right now in front of me. <laughs> you could see what I was doing, but that's what happens when you talk with your hands. <laughs> so, but, it, but you're right. It is a, it's a discussion. If, you know, we do think we do travel as if it's just something else to do. Like, Oh, one day I'll like to do this. One day I'll like to do this. One day I like to travel. But, um, I think what we are both encouraging everyone is make it the priority. The moment it becomes a priority, life changes. I'd also say that it allows you the opportunity to do a little bit more, maybe sooner than what you had anticipated. I hear so many stories of when I retire, I'm going to travel, which mm -hmm. is great. But, you know, as we look at a lot of, and I actually come from finance and retirement planning. <laughs> so when we were looking at, you know, what people's retirement savings were going to be, there was something to be said with the assumptions that they were going to live the same level of their current lifestyle or less. And that, that may not be the case, especially depending on what kind of travel you're adding to the picture. Yeah. So you may still need a separate travel account and having those planned sooner rather than later. The other part that I've experienced with some of the people I've worked with is their physical ability oh, yeah. shifts. And so while historically they maybe were able to do cheaper travel or more active trips, as they age, they may be finding, oh my gosh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to keep traveling as long as I thought I would or wait until mm -hmm. retirement. I want to get some more done sooner. Yes. You know what? Do it now. And it, 
it is, you know, sometimes I have a hard time with some of with talking about this because it sounds so easy to just say, do it now, do it now. But it really is one of those things. And everybody just think about that one time you waited so long to do it, then do something. Then the moment you do it, you're like, why did I wait so long to do this? And, and that's kind of the slight regret thing in that, yeah, you're going to have to wrap your brain around it if it's something you want to do now. Now, you can go in and start traveling now. You really can. And since I talk so much to business owners, a lot of business owners are in the same boat. When I'm done with the business, then I'll travel. Guess what? You can be a speaker and travel. You know, you can go do business in, business in other countries, other states, and you can still travel. So you kind of have to get out of the box of what you think travel is. And maybe now if you are, if you have a job, maybe incorporate that, you know, talk to your boss. Maybe there's some ways that you can travel just a little bit more. I worked for the U.S. Navy. And the cool thing was I got to travel a lot only because I walked into a room and said, I think I want to travel. And because I was single <laughs> without kids at the time, they shipped me off everywhere. <laughs> but that works. And I will say one of the things to note and I, I spent some time at a large manufacturing area in the Milwaukee, or a large manufa manufacturing business in the Milwaukee area. And the women that I worked with very clearly said, we are passed over for travel opportunities because we're women, wives, and mothers. Oh, yeah. And there was an assumption and a presumption about whether they would be willing to travel. And those were not always accurate. That sucks. It, it does, but it's not, it's not really surprising when you think about it. So, so in their effort to be considerate mm -hmm. of those roles, women weren't even being asked. And so as HR and leadership in the organization, the conversation became, you have to ask. You know what? That's one thing I will say for all of my, my women friends that are listening it is time for us to start asking for what we want. If travel is something that you want, of course, you've made it clear with the family, everybody's fine with it. You're gonna have to just step up and start asking for what you want. Now you better be ready, because I actually did a live stream on this. You better be ready, because when you start asking, people will go to bat for you, and you better be ready to deliver. Correct. You better be ready. So don't ask if you're not ready yet. Absolutely. If you don't want to receive it, don't put it out there. But it is essential that as women that we ask for what we want. And mm -hmm. I challenge the male leaders to say, you know what, don't assume that the women do or don't want something. Your responsibility as a leader is to ask them as well. They can, yeah. they can, be, they can decline, but they get the opportunity to decline. It's not a presumption. Yeah. We get in trouble when we start assuming things. You know, they have all sorts of sayings about that, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love it. So as I can't believe that we've spent this much time together so far. <laughs> and I know that you have so much to share with the people in my audience. Can you please let them know where to find you and, and what they might be looking for when they come to you? You know what? Here's the beautiful thing is... If you want to get to me directly, if you have any questions around your budget, how we can, um, how I can help you travel um, inside of your budget, setting up your account, you can actually go find me over on budgetschool.co. And I have a page there that says live stream every morning at 7.45 a.m. Mountain Time. Google it. I know most people don't know where Mountain Time is. Um, Google it. But I go, I go live and I answer any questions about business, budgeting, money, anything. I really do answer just about anything. So you can join me over there. For those of you who are looking for some, you need some tangible tips and you want to print something out, go to budgetschool.co. We're going to have a section called travel. Just look for travel and I'll give you tons and tons of information about how you can go and travel on a budget, how to set up your travel account and any other tips that you're looking for. So yeah, if you want me live and in person every morning, you can go to budgetschool.co, actually live, um, live stream over on facebook.com. So kind of fun doing that. <laughs> so Felicia, where are you headed to after, what is your 2018 travel plans look like? You've talked about, Woo. yeah, you've talked about Copenhagen. You talked that you just did Bhutan. What else? 
You know what? 2018 is going to be a very interesting year. My husband found out that he has to travel every month for his business now, for his job. Now, don't don't cry for him. He works for PlayStation and he is forced to go back to San Diego once a month oh, and play video games. So, he, yeah, <laughs> don't feel don't 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 feel bad for him at all. But outside of that, you know, just coming back from Copenhagen and Iceland, on my way to Phoenix, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Getting to Atlanta, St. Louis, actually getting to Minnesota. My next big trip is Women in Travel. I will be a speaker there in Quebec City, and really excited about that. And then I head back up to Canada again a month later to speak in Calgary. So that's all we've planned so far. And there might be a little secret trip that I'm working on to get to the UK to speak. Hmm. Hmm. So that's just up until July. I don't know what's happening after that. You know, let's only plan for the first half of the year. It yeah, just more fun. the first half of the year. And I don't know, if somebody's going anywhere fun, you know, just call me up. We'll see what's in the travel budget. <laughs> I love it. Well, I hope you at some point find your way in the Midwest and we can hang out in Milwaukee. Oh, somebody just started asking me about that. Good. Good. <laughs> I love to hear it. Felicia, I really appreciate you are just a wealth of knowledge and the fact that you were willing to share your tips on how to get folks started off right for 2018. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so very much for having me. I love doing this and I'll do anything for you. Definitely. <laughs> you are a lot of fun. All right, ladies, until next time. Wasn't it great to hear some of the tips that Felicia shared with us today? Remember, just one small step, like starting your travel account and setting a little bit aside each week can make a huge impact on your travel budget and your travel dreams. If you love these stories and want to help support Go Solo Live, please visit us at patreon.com slash go solo live. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash go solo live and show your love. We've reached the end of another episode, but the conversation doesn't have to end there. Follow us on Twitter at Go Solo Live or find us on Facebook at Transform Via Travel. Don't forget to invite your friends to listen to an episode of Go Solo Live. Once they do, they'll be hooked. And until next time, remember, go solo not alone.